on one of the things that we want to see is, you know, individual players in, improve, uh, improve their ability to play winning football fundamentals. Uh, but I also think we're trying to develop some team dynamics, some team chemistry, uh, looking for people who put team first, um, guys that understand that, you know, what you did last year really is not going to create any value for what you do this year or help you play better this year. But um, it's going to base, be based on um, what you do to create um, positive outcome for yourself this year by p paying attention to detail, uh, doing little things right, playing with discipline, um, holding uh, each other accountable to the standard uh, that they all know that we expect from them uh, day in and day out, being positive, not being negative, um, set a good example for each other. And, you know, they have great examples on this team of, you know, some of the things um, that we had on last year's team, which was all about intangibles. It was all about leadership. It, all, it was all about holding people accountable. So uh, I think that's part of the development that, you know, we want to have, you know, in spring practice as a team, as well as just running plays, improving, learning assignments, uh, learning what to do, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. And I do see improvement. Um, the last two practices, I think uh, you see a lot of young guys who were very apprehensive, uh, unsure, uncertain about what they were supposed to do so they didn't play fast in the last scrimmage. Uh, I see those guys starting to uh, get a little more confidence, and uh, I think they learned a lot uh, from the first time in the stadium, first time in the scrimmage, first time you know, being in a live situation in college football for a lot of them. So uh, you look for great improvement from the first scrimmage to the second scrimmage, and um, you know, certainly that's going to be our goal for uh, this one. You know, one of the things that does cause a little bit of confusion this time in the spring is, you know, it's almost like you know we have double install. We're still putting some things in the offense, are putting more and more things in. We have to play against more and more things, both sides of the ball. But at the same time, you know, we spend time working on opponents uh, and things that we don't see, you know, from our offense. So we're putting a plan in for that too. So it's it, it can be a, a little bit of a burden for especially some of the younger players. It's a lot for them to absorb you know, each and every practice, but uh, at least we're getting exposure to it. Uh, so when we have to play against it next year, it's not going to be all new for them. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to a much better scrimmage. We'll have kind of a Friday's practice. We'll be, you know, sort of polished, not put a lot of stuff in, try to get guys to understand what we're going to do uh, so they can go out there and play fast and we can play with some and make some improvement as a team. Um, questions? All right, we'll get started with Michael Casagrande. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Jalen Moody, I know he was uh, a late addition to that signing class. What do you remember about him and the recruitment process? And uh, what stood, about, stood out about him uh, when you were pursuing him? Well, you know, Jalen Moody was a guy that we had on the radar screen that initially we didn't recruit. We liked. Um, and we had a needed linebacker, and we really liked some of the things that he did. And we actually took him late, and he has been – you know, a very positive uh, guy on our team. He's been a core player on special teams. Uh, he's got a great attitude. He plays with a lot of energy. Uh, now he has an opportunity to start, and he's certainly taken advantage of that. So, um, you know, we're, we're happy that he's here, and he's doing a really good job for us. Go to Cecil. Cecil, go ahead. Not sure what's going on, Cecil. We'll come back to you. Go to Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach. Uh, you guys added Coach Sabota earlier this week. Just Is he able to, to go through spring? Is he doing things with you guys? And just what do you think overall of the addition to, to him and your staff? Yeah, we're really pleased with it. You know, he's got a lot of connections. He knows a lot of people in Texas, which we thought was very, very important. Um, he was the best teacher uh, in the interview. Uh, and it certainly hasn't disappointed in his input that he's had to this point. But, you know, the way we're managing this is, you know, Todd Watson was really uh, sort of the number one intern on special teams. Uh, so, you know, he's kind of running the special teams. That's the first time I've ever hired a guy, had to hire a guy in the middle of spring practice. So we're not going to throw him out there in front of the players. Uh, he's learning our system. He's learning our scheme. He's actually having input, you know, in the meetings, but uh, really can't coach the players. And he's really doing the same thing with the offense relative to the tight end. So, um, you know, we're probably a lot more flexible now when it comes to coaches uh, because, 
you know, last year we had guys in and out. I mean, I think we had five full-time coaches, you know, for the LSU game last year. So, you know, we're, 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 we're a little more flexible when things like this happen. Um, and Todd has done a good job of stepping up and helping us get through the spring. And I haven't seen us really skip a beat from a special teams execution standpoint. Go to Aaron Settles. Jordan Battle is, um, is is one of the veterans now back there in the secondary. What does he mean to the defense? And I know you said leadership is always a work in progress, but he, is he a guy you've identified that you expect to sort of take a leadership role this year? Well, Jordan Battle does a good job. He plays a lot of good football, but it's kind of up to him uh, as to how he wants to accept the role of leadership, how assertive he wants to be. Uh, people have to earn the right to be leaders. You know, they have to do things right themselves. They can't be late for meetings. They can't you know, not do things exactly right. They, they have to set a good example for others and you know, they have to care about enough about other people to help them for their benefit. So um, that, that's his choice. Um, and that's a lot of players' choice on the team. Do they want to take that responsibility of being a leader? Uh, he has done that at times and I think he would be very good if he chose to do it. We'll try Cecil again, Cecil. Need to unmute Cecil. Got to have a question from Cecil now. I know. What's up? <laughs> okay, we're going to try uh, Tony Sakalas. When you look at the success of Mac Jones and, and, and Jalen Moody, um, how much does that help with when guys like that succeed after kind of waiting a little bit? How much does that help when you're talking to a younger player about trust in the process? Well, I, I don't really talk to players that much about trust in the process. I talk to the players about the importance of focusing on development. Um, you might see that as a similar thing or maybe even the same. Uh, but I think everybody needs to have the ability to self-assess, to figure out, okay, here's where I'm at. That's the only way you can improve if you can self-assess. And then you kind of help the coaches help def you define what you need to do to actually improve uh, so that you can become a better player. Uh, we want everybody to play early. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, we played a lot of freshmen here. We've had a lot of freshmen start for us and uh, play very well. But at the same time, we have a responsibility and obligation not to put a guy out there uh, when he's not ready to go play with confidence, be confident in what he's doing so he can go pl play fast and create value for himself. So we want players to focus on development, not outcomes. Outcomes can be distractions. Uh, so we, we want them to focus on what they need to do to get the outcome. And their ability to self-assess um, you know, helps their uh, learning curve, I think. We will go to Mike Rodak next. What have uh, Xavier Williams and, and Javon Baker been able to carry over from their playing time last season and really apply it to the opportunity to have this year? Well, I've, I've seen improvement in both guys. Uh, Javon Baker um, plays with a lot of toughness. He's a very physical guy. I think he has a much better grasp of the offense this year. So his mental errors are way down. His production is up, which I think is a good thing. Um, and, you know, Ziggy is you know, kind of a jack of all trade. You know, he can play about all the positions and he's pretty good doing them all. He's got some ability to, to return punts. So um, he's made really nice progress. He has experience, he knows what to do. Uh, I think he can always go in the game and, you know, help us uh, whenever he's called on. Okay, we got two more. We'll go Glenn Gilbo and then we'll finish up with Cecil. Sorry, Glenn, try again. I hit mute, I apologize. Go ahead, Glenn. Send mute one more time, Glenn. Thank you. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? Hey, Glenn, how are you? Okay, good. How are you doing? Hey, I, I'm doing something on a feature on John Mitchell with, with the Steelers. Y'all coached together with Cleveland in the early 90s. What What do you remember? You were at D.C. at that time. What, what do you remember about John, Coach D-Line? Right, John's a great coach. Uh, he's, first of all, he's a great person. He's a good guy. He got along with everybody on the staff. Uh, he worked hard, uh, did a really good job paid attention to detail. I think his players really responded well to him. He had great relationships with them, but he pushed them uh, and they actually performed really well. So, um, you know, John's one of my favorite people. Uh, you know, he's an Alabama guy. He's got a lot of history here uh, at this university. And uh, he's obviously been a great um, ambassador for this university for a long time. And uh, he's had a great career in the NFL. And, um, you know, he's one of the better coaches that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Did um, Belichick really push you guys hard uh, that year? Y'all were just 40 at the time. Y'all are the same age too, I think. I don't know. Yeah, Bill and I, I think we are the same age. 
Um, Robin, uh, Mitchell, I mean. Mitchell is. Look, you know, Bill is a hard worker. Uh, he's got endless energy. Uh, I think he has high expectations for everybody on his staff. Um, it was, you know, tough for all of us, especially being a new staff coming in, trying to learn systems, uh, new players, uh, improve the team that wasn't very good. And it took us like, I think about the third year, we had a pretty good defense. The fourth year, we had a pretty good team uh, and got in the playoffs. So, you know, everybody really worked hard, you know, to do that. But uh, I would say that if anybody on that staff that you ever talked to would say that it was well worth it uh, in terms of all that we learned uh, and helped us have more success in the future, I know I can speak, you know, to that because I probably learned as much from him. I've had some great mentors. He was one of them. And I learned a lot about organization, uh, defining roles uh, for everybody in the organization, what the expectations were. And I think that, um, you know, a lot of what we do here, you know, comes from, you know, some of that approach. And uh, it seemed difficult at the time, uh, but all the, the most difficult jobs I've had have been the most beneficial. And I think John Mitchell would tell you the same thing. Uh, he probably became a better coach because we all got coached by Bill and uh, he made us all better. Okay, we're gonna try Cecil one last time before we go. Cecil, go ahead. Okay, I'm not sure. I think Cecil got a new phone, Coach, so we'll have to get him next time. Coach, thanks for your time. All right, well, there's one other thing that I'd like to mention. I, I know, you know, Luke Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe was a, you know, great fan here. I love the University of Alabama, and I just want his family to know that our thoughts and prayers are, you know, with you all. Uh, and, um, you know, certainly a difficult circumstance for all of us, and he's certainly going to be missed. So, uh, God bless you all. Thanks. Thanks, Coach.